Hello everybody, how are you all doing? Hope you're having a wonderful day. Uh, it is Saturday and I can think of nothing more I'd want to do right now than try and work on uh, getting um, Star Citizen into Unreal Engine. That just sounds like exactly what I want to do right now. The downside is I just loaded up my project and, and uh, uh, all, all my, my textures, textures have, have been, been reverted, reverted and, and are, are gone. gone. So, <laughs> yay. <sighs> um, it's, it's not, not terribly, terribly hard, hard to, to fix because you know, you know, I just come, come in here, I, I search, search for, for you know, you know, you know, first, first I, I pull out. out. Oh. Oh. And then, and then I, just I just come, come in here, search, search for, for the material, and, and then, then that's, that's it. it. And it's, it's just, just rinse, rinse and repeat, repeat all, all the way down. down. <laughs> I, 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 I tried, tried uh, doing, doing more with it, it and, and I'm just, just now noticing, noticing for, for some, some reason, reason this does, does not have Nanite enabled. enabled. So, let's so let's enable, enable Nanite. Nanite. Well, that's because well, some, some of these don't, don't work, work with Nanite. Nanite. That's, that's right. right. Double, Double sound. sound. Oh. Okay. Okay. okay how, how about, about now? now? Nope, that's, that's still, still there. there. Do, 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 do. No. no. Do, 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 do. Hmm. Is this is out only opening, opening to that. that? Okay. Well, okay, now that's recording just fine. But, but that, that doesn't, doesn't give me the output, output I, need. I need. So, so what's, what's going, going on here? here? Oh, is, is that, that set, set to... Ooh, that, that might, might be set, set to... to uh, uh, no. Testing. Okay, that works. What the hell? Okay, so that should solve that. Unfortunately, that makes things a little bit trickier for me uh, a little bit later on. Hmm. I'm going to have to find a better solution for that. Yeah, uh, it's because when I switched scenes, it uh, was starting to get uh, data from uh, uh, my computer, my local computer. And, uh, you know, suddenly you know, it had, oh, this, you know, PC is outputting audio. Let's send that over here. And uh, then... Uh, but and it's also recording the uh, the microphone audio, so I can either have it baked into uh, my desktop audio, which I don't want, or I can uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it's just ow. <laughs> okay, well, I'll just have to fix that at some point. Oh, wait, that means that... Oh, shit. Yeah. All right, well, I guess track number five is going to be the uh, one that has all the audio. Or I can make it track two. Can I set this up so that it actually outputs a different audio track to... Yes, I can. Let me try stopping recording. I'm also going to have to stop sending a signal out. All right, so now it will probably let me change up my audio settings. Um, I think it was 
four. So now I turn that back on. I'll start recording again. And now if I, if do, I do that, that no, nope, nope, it, it up, it, it echoes, echoes again. again. Damn. Damn. This is a tricky one. <laughs> okay, so hmm. Well, maybe if I oh no, that's all disabled. That Star Destroyer is disabled! Eee. Uh Okay, maybe it's something to do over here. Okay, the microphone's coming in, going in there. But OBS is recording to that. So let me see. I don't, I don't know, know why, why it's, it's sending, sending that out to there. Oh, okay. But then I don't have that. Uh, well, that, that attaches, attaches to, to the desktop, desktop audio. audio. This, this doesn't, doesn't make sense. sense. The only, the only solution sol is to disable my microphone and Discord tracks out of track one on OBS coming out. And then over here, I get a clean uh, you know, audio, desktop audio pass. Speaking of uh, audio, I need some music to work for it, too. Uh, no, not going to use uh, that. Uh, Train Your Dragon's fantastic, but no. Uh, where's the Star Citizen music? There we go. And I'm not hearing it. Okay, there we go. Uh, okay, good. Uh, yep, that's all good. Turn that volume down so it doesn't overpower things. <sighs> now, it kind of hurts this, but, uh, eh, I'll have to deal with it later. <laughs> Nothing I can do now. Uh, we fixed the echo, but now I can't get the, uh, <laughs> the audio tracks to come out easily, so I'm going to have to still process stuff. Let's do a save here. Now, if I remember correctly, you know, certain things don't work when you uh, enable Nanite. Most noticeably transparent materials. So we'll have to just find ones that aren't transparent 
or we take the transparent materials out. You know, take him for a walk, tell him they're a good girl. Unfortunately, scaffolding red, wherever that may be, is a material that's transparent, so... to just re-import these, but uh, I don't think I have the uh, I don't have an ability to do that. I tried to just re-import and, ho and hope the material would uh, fix it, but nope, it did not. So. Uh. Um, let's see. Turn off game settings, or no, let's leave game setting on. That's actually quite nice. Enable display. Oh, color management display. Okay. Uh, show frames per second. <laughs> so I'm getting about 70 frames a second here. And that's 80. That looks like a hot garbage mess. Is nanite what I really want? Or did these just import weirdly? Uh, you know what? I'm actually going to disable nanite. Oh dear god, that looks so much better. What the hell happened, nanite? <laughs> The chosen one. <laughs> so I don't know where my materials went. <laughs> Where'd they come from? Where did they go? Who knows? Domino Joe. Okay, it's bugging me why that's you know being sent out like that. It's one of those, <laughs> sit back, listen to a podcast, talk to your stream. Yeah, sure, looks like scaffolding worked to me. Except without the scaffolds. Uh, I had a really good dinner and I'm so full, I just, it, it's almost painful. Just got to let it digest. I just had way too much of it. <laughs> Ooh. This is cool. Do 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 all right. So much to the great metal pipes. So I am not totally unconvinced that I have these materials correct because the more I've been looking at them, the more they feel like they just do not work. And uh, what do I mean by that? I mean, they do not you know, look close to what they should. You want to see how it should be looking closer? It should look like that. Yeah, here's a nice uh, 
fully colored one. It looks like the right colors and everything. So why is it that the uh, this these materials, although likely closer to what, how they're supposed to function, look so dramatically different? I don't know. Do I have like three of these open or something? Greebles D. Greebles D's, Greebles Dub. So I decided that today, you know, before I found out I had to do all this, that I was going to uh, reference the old scene in order to build this up. Okay, where is it? There it is. I was wondering where that was. That just looks so beautiful. It's, it looks like those bars are really there. Oddly enough, <laughs> it, it would be better if they were really there. Because Nanite. Maybe that's what we'll do at some point. I did a test, and as much as I would love to do material functions and then instances of that, that crashes the game still. Sad. Well, I shouldn't say game, it crashes the whole freaking instance. I love how they just took like three parts of a caterpillar, extend, extended some of them, and then just shoved it onto the side. <laughs> Can I hide the... No, I want to hide the ground, not the grid. I like the grid. The grid. A digital frontier. Oh yeah, there's the inner arm. I want to... I want... To lower, to lower the quality. Don't it comes up to my knees. All right, let's set that over to low. Now it's compiling. Once it's done, will it give me more frames over here? Only time will tell. Humans, I come from the world of Autobadia. I deliver this message. Return the Allspark. Or what? Or... Try, yeah. Decepticons already within you will kill everybody. Are you threatening us? I am an Autobot. I would not kill you unless you threaten my people. And even then, I would try not to. How do we know you're not a Decepticon? Do you see this symbol? No Autobot, no Decepticon has this symbol, for it identifies me as an Autobot. All right. Be nice if I could just like mass do this, but I don't think I can. Uh, 
Actually, let's take a quick look. Uh, let's uh, grab these cylinders. Bulk edit via property matrix. Uh, okay. Yeah. Not seeing anything that would let me just, you know, do what I need to do. Hmm. Okay. All right, nope, can't do that, that's too bad. Okay, I think I got all that. Yes, I did. And I was working on this. Working right along, right along, foot loose and fancy free. Right in parallel, big time is it waiting for me. Rebels V. Rebels V. Alright, good. That's all of it. Oh, this is going to take a while. I kind of want to uh, open up source file location. Let's see if I can even have this available. I do. So, uh, great crack and hollow structure. Can I drag and drop these in? And doesn't look like it. It just re-imports them. All right, let's remove them. save oh actually I can't <laughs> delete them great uh. well actually what I can do import here under parent create new instance yes that's all good import <laughs> all right that looks like it worked Oh. Did it? Did it work? Good. All right. Uh, let's open up a new window. new content browser bringing that up will open shame that will bring shame upon us all what makes you think that oh, I don't know it's shameful isn't it all right replace references and I want to replace it with that. Delete that. Uh, this is a little bit faster.
All right, so we got the structures in. Although I'm not, I don't have any clue where they are. Oh, right there. I think I need to disable Nanite. Yeah, look how much better those suddenly are. Okay, so that looks like it's probably going to be the better solution. Is just literally re-import them. Actually, no, I do want to just delete these. Delete them all! <laughs> uh. Yes, force delete. So, what we're now going to do is go up to exterior once the system starts responding again. Alright, there we go. Now we head up to exterior. We'll re-import all the meshes. Yep, under parent, do not build nanite. Uh, vertex replace. Combine meshes. Do not import those. Import normals and tangents. Convert scene, convert scene unit. I think we'll just leave that for now because we actually u are using the correct units. All right, uh, import all. It's just. It's a little bit more CPU and compute intensive, but it will save me a lot of work. <laughs> I also have uh, some uh, some work going on on this screen, kind of in the background. So, who knows how long that's going to take. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I went looking at all the games and I was like, I don't really feel like playing any of these today. So I figured, hey, let's uh, work on uh, work on this. Well, this guy's surprised that... Uh, all that stuff just disappeared. I was probably moving th things around and they got, you know... <laughs> I was about to say dusty, but that's not quite right. Da, 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 da. 
Oh man, this is the big weight. It's the big weight! <laughs> I am so looking forward to getting my new chair. Uh, ooh, is it still on schedule? Hello, baby. Um... Ooh. It's pretty close. Looks like it's uh, driving across America. Um, yeah, it looks like it might actually be here on time, which would be Tuesday. Although there is entirely the possibility that it will be here Monday. But it'll probably be until Tuesday that I actually get it set up. I love this chair. Except for the fact that it, sh it shrinks and it, it makes my knees bend at an odd angle that's very painful for me. Uh, and, of course, then there's this little armrest right here. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's actually quite nice until it broke. So, been trying to play carefully with it. So, I decided it was time. I, even though I've had this chair less than a year... Uh, I needed something a little bit better, so I spent the money, got myself a really nice chair. Uh, it's actually able to support 100 pounds more than I, I need, so I was actually very happy about that. Alright, looks like a uh, little bit of important problems, but for the most part, everything looks fine. And it looks like it all connected to the right uh, textures, so we can just take these and drop them in the mesh. Yeah, hopefully I'll have that. If it, if the chair is going to be here on Monday, I will absolutely get it set up and ready to go on Monday. But, uh, you know, Tuesday is when it's scheduled to be here. And so I am, you know, that means Wednesday you'll see it for the first time. It's actually nice. It has like those new, those 4D armrests. But uh, what that basically means is... Uh, uh, I can, you know, my joysticks, I have uh, table mounts for them. I can get chair mounts now. So they'll just be like right here and, uh, you know, as I spin, it'll all work. All right, let's get back to this. So, uh, I am going to basically regenerate this material, this, uh, blueprint. And paste. And this will take a little bit to update. Ah, there we go. Compile and save. And this will take a little bit while too. But you can already see in the background here, we've got some good texture work going on. But I don't think it's correct texture work. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of reference for, you know, the Kraken in terms of in-game, you know, experiences. There's the holo holograms, but yeah, they don't quite work. So the best thing we have is their cinematic. Ah, and that can sometimes be painful too. Damn, that was a sharp neck crack. <laughs> this is still probably our best bet at how it should look. I, I spent a lot of time trying to get this to look right and I think for the most part it does there's definitely some improvements to be made with it but uh, 
and I think because I have this set to low scalability, it's not looking very good. But, you know, it's nice and, you know, nice and speedy. I have been noticing with Unreal Engine 5 that it will sometimes get into a locked state, which sucks. I'm hoping it actually is still functional. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fear keeps it in line! <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I absolutely love having that little bit of reflection in there. But I don't think that that's accurate. Yeah, there are things in here that look much better than they did before, but at the same time, I don't think it's accurate. So, I want to work on this today. I want to try and get it to look a little bit more like our uh, other one, which is, you know, quite a bit closer to uh, how it should look. And if we can get cinematics with this guy, whoo boy! What is? I don't know what that is? Probably the landing gear. <laughs> Every ship has one. Yeah, it's just like really shiny. I don't know why it's like that, but you yeah, gotta admit it looks nice that way. So, as simple as uh, these materials usually are, I found that I got better results processing things from other ships. Which means, I kind of feel like I need to uh, bring out another... Uh, I feel like I need to bring out something else. Alright, so we're, we're getting good results here, but... It might be time to uh, bring in a different Drake ship. Or even just a whole other ship entirely. Alright, uh, what would be uh, what would be a ship to bring in? Um, I'd love to bring in a Hammerhead. I want something that's actually in the game. Oh, you, no, 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 no. I do not want to open that right now. Uh, yeah. Oh, wait. Is there, has there been an update? Mm, nope. I still have... This is the latest version that I'm about to install. So what I'm about to install is called Starfab. And it is a uh, a tool for converting Star Citizen to effectively Blender. And then I wrote another tool that lets me get you know Blender out and into Unreal Engine. Materials, not so much. So we still have to figure out what ship we're going to do. I mean, you know, everybody loves the Cuddy Black. We could also do, uh, well, we could do a Buccaneer. I'd love to do a Caterpillar. But I feel like we probably need to start small. A Gladius. That makes perfect sense. Uh... Half of the games are up using... Okay, yeah, this is like four versions old now. Uh, Gladiuses are, uh, you know, old enough. Let's see, do I have a Gladius actually out? I do! Oh, wait, 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 wait. When did I pull it out? No, no, I pulled it out recently. Okay. 
Uh, let's see, we've got Gladius, Hammerhead, Idris, Reclaimer. Ooh, Reclaimer. Uh, Redeemer. Ooh. That's it. That's what we're pulling out. A Pisces. All right. Ooh, an Aurora. A bangle. Hee <laughs> hee. Uh, Prospector. The Cuddies. Yeah, I think the Pisces sounds like a good one to pull out. So, uh, I'm just kind of waiting on uh, that program to uh, start up. So I can install it. But yeah, the, the Pisces, that's a good enough ship. It's small, but it's uh, one I know very well, because that's actually kind of my almost my daily driver. It's my uh, get around the universe ship right now. Anvil. Let's see, spaceships. Ships, Anvil, Pisces. Apparently I also grabbed the Terrapin. And then there's an interior and a landing gear. Oh, nope, not level. Interior, mesh, Pisces, mesh, because I'm definitely seeing meshes in here. And I'm guessing landing gear is nothing but mesh. Alright, so do we have any materials? We do. some others in here. Well, we'll see if we actually need them. Well, they were pulled out, so I think we might. But I'm pretty certain we're going to need most of these. So we'll start with the Pisces exterior. Where are you, program? Okay, I don't need that open anymore. Copied. <laughs> now unfortunately this program takes a while to load up especially when you're installing it
Do you? Do you really? It should be the local one. Beautiful music and chilling lyrics. Alright, so come on, I want to get to the Pisces already. Why'd you just use the old install? Shut up, the old install's broken like four times. Well, that's not true, They're, they made up things. <laughs> don't know why my lips get so chapped right while I'm streaming. Perfectly fine all the other times. <laughs> uh, if I remember, I will put the link for Starfab uh, in the uh, YouTube uh, channel. And uh, I'll actually post it in the, uh, in the uh, channel right now. Let me actually just open it up. So you can find it on, uh, uh, not GitHub, GitLab. Alright, here we are. So, that is the current location of Starfab. Uh, I'll try to remember to put the link down below. Grab the la latest tag uh, as of this recording or as this stream. It's currently uh, 0.47, and that's what I just installed or am installing. And that was posted a week ago. But in case you're interested in doing this yourself, you will need a copy of Star Citizen. The good news is. There's going to be a free fly coming in about a month. So if you're interested in playing Star Citizen, you can sign up using my link down below, uh, which will, uh, you know, do a uh, referral link, I should say. Uh, if you buy the game, you get extra money, and uh, I, I get a little kickback uh, once, like, you know, X number of people sign up. If we get like a thousand people to sign up on with my referral link, uh, you know that that that'd be fantastic, and then we can get into the Mile High Club or the Million Mile High Club, I think it's called, uh, and that is uh, on Area 18. That is limited to people who have you know done 1,024 uh, invites with their link. If we can double that, we get a free uh, a free. I get a free spaceship uh, for us all to fly in, which would be the uh, a javelin, I believe. Okay, now I'm curious, which one is it? I think it's the javelin. Let me look it up. By the way, they have their spring merch sale. 
if you've heard about the Mist It's Expanse, that is actually on sale right now. You can, uh, it's a uh, mobile refining ship, so you can have your mining friends there. You, they come by, drop off their bags. You can start processing their ores, and uh, you know you don't you just stay there, and then you can drop off another bag, and you know someone else you know travels along, go and uh, take that off the sale, and then sends you the money. But you can buy one of those ships right now for uh, 135 war bond, which means you got to use real money, and about 150 in uh, you know for a standard one. Okay, let's see. Probably settings. And... Referral program. There we are. Yeah, I currently have nine total recruits. I'm at level five. But I think that, like... Uh... You know, things mix up. I have 11 prospects. Nine people have actually been recruited. Um, I'm currently at level 5. One more person and I'll get to uh, level 10. Or I'll get up to the next uh, the next reward, I guess it is. Yeah, I don't know how I am. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm at 9 RP. I need 10 to get to the next one, which actually gets me a Gladius. That's kind of interesting. Uh, let's see. Yes, if we can get 2,017 people to sign up with my referral code, I will get a Javelin for us all to play on. But uh, at uh, 1,024 people... We are in the Million Mile High Club. So we can party at the trendiest club in the verse. The Million Mile High Club is an ex exclusive in-game facility for the most dedicated Star Citizen fans. So, yeah, there's that to look forward to. Uh, a couple of other things in here. Fair number of ships and models and other things. So yeah, there's uh, lots of to do on that. Come on! You've been copying files forever now. And how are you doing? Eh, you're going slow. Uh. <laughs> ah, finally! Alright. Start up Starfab. And this should be 4.07 or 0 0.47. Yeah, the Pisces should be an easy one to do. And I have access to that in game. Yay, there he goes. All right. Um, let's grab my backups because I like working off the bat. I make periodic game backups. And so I like using that instead. And of course, it's on the other screen. And I can't drag it over. Well, it's loading now. Technically speaking, this is the uh, the Drake ships. So I probably need to... I can make a copy of this level. Duplicate. Test. Anvil ships. Or I could just go test ships. Yeah, I think just test ships is fine. And with just simple test ships, I can bring in any. Let's open this. It's going to be literally the same scene. Little different. Once we get that working! Oh, come on, hurry up! Uh, 
Oh, now it's processing more data. Yay. All right. And if I just reset, it goes straight to the floor. go finally and now it's paused thinking about it all right here we go all right let's go content ships anvil p for pisces Eight Pisces. All right, we'll grab that and the expedition version, just so we can have two different versions. And I think that's going to be it. Image conversion to Targa XML. Yep. Uh, com yeah, convert. Generate to extracted log. Overwrite. Yep. Let's double check. Targa, XML, good. Exporting to the right spot, good. All right, export. that's going. Let's load up Blender. I probably do need to update this to three dot something. Although this, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what versions of Blender are compatible with uh, StarFab right now. That's, you know, it's right in front of me. So why don't I spell it correctly? <laughs> Pisces. There we go. What's this waiting for? I guess it finished. All right, well, let's see. Uh, can I, in the meantime, All Blender add-on. All right. And Starfab Blender link. And SC modding Star System Data Tools. Okay. 
that should be it. SE modding import. <laughs> Looks like they need to fix that. <laughs> Uh, where am I going? That's an excellent question there. Right there. Mm, auto remove physics proxies. Yeah. Auto import materials. Auto remove proxy meshes, yeah. Import lighting, import all containers. Alright, good. It looks like it just finished. Good. Start the link. Alright, let's import. Yay, Pisces! Looking pretty good. Nice and small. Oh, that's where the components are. Yeah, this is going to be great. Okay. So they've actually done a lot of good work on... Uh, getting the materials to actually work really well. Well, I think they only work in uh, this mode. <laughs> well, cycles at least. Switch the cycles, GPU, experimental, and denoising, set the optrix. There we go, that's looking better. Of course, GPU crashed. No. Wow, all my GPUs crashed. <laughs> that actually handled quite better than uh, I expected. Wow, Discord crashed. And so did OBS. There we go. That was just kind of surprising how much that broke. All right, um, okay, I don't need that anymore. <laughs> yeah, basically all the programs died. Go away. Um, so let's, uh, <laughs> this one, surprisingly, didn't, you know, survive. That, I'm actually very impressed by that. So when I close everything else, I can get up to 120 frames a second. That's nice. But I still need to use the blenders.
we're not gonna try anything crazy this time. Let's just get the Pisces. So, yeah, that's a good spot. Let's save this. Should have just saved it to the correct location. I'm gonna double check. We did not. Oh wait, do I need to? Oh yeah, I need to do objects. <laughs> Stepped a little bit too much. There we go. Alright. Alright. Did I do something wrong? What's going on here? There's my frostbite importer. Starfab, connect. Oh, because Starfab's not running. Grid breaker. and I'm not seeing meshes. Oh, oh, oh. That's a spotlight. Lots of spotlights. There, God, that's a lot of demon corpses. Did I mess it up? I think I might have messed it up. Alright, export. Let's 
scenes, no. Is it not picking that up? Why can't I feel my anything? Okay, Anvil Pisces 01. Ugh. That's not right. All right, import. Start tab. Pisces. We'll leave everything as is. Model import. That's fine. What's going on there? Uh. Maybe I should do the other one or something else. Have anything else that's small? Well, the buccaneer. Okay. Uh, export. Yes. All right, objects, spaceships, ships, and little Pisces. Where, oh, did I have to actually select that? I might actually have to have selected that. Uh, I think I messed up the script somehow. Let me uh, take a look. Uh, I don't think I did, though. I mean, I'll take full responsibility if I did. I thought I fixed it pretty well. Alright, so what did I do? Mm, yeah, that looks like it could be, you know, probably right. Pretty certain that is right. Is that the uh, only difference? Oh, export mesh is a little bit different. Uh, ah, yes. Okay, let's uh, let's see what's going on here. No objects selected. All right, merge materials, that's all fine. Um, output folder, adjusted folder, final output, that's still wrong. Uh, 
if I hit this. <laughs> Does literally nothing. Okay, so somehow I messed this up by improving it. Uh, I didn't want to do programming tonight, but I guess I am. Because <laughs> it's got to work. All right, so... Uh... All right, so. Still the same? Yep, okay. Hmm, things look a little different. So, are there custom properties here? No. Dun, 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 dun. Ooh, we got some helpers. And materials. Neat. Okay, so it looks like uh, a lot of the data actually got changed up. So... Um, okay, I think he changed up some of the uh, items. So it's probably file name. Oh, actually, item ports. Hmm. Okay, so let's just change this up to file name. <laughs> and we'll refresh this and see if it works. Probably not. All right, so, and save. Oh. Okay. Hmm. 
So we don't have any custom properties in this. Notice there was a problem because you know one of the things I noticed was you know oh uh, you know, anvil dot cga pisces okay well where is that right up here with a dash so had to uh, sanitize the parent name so that will likely fix that issue oh Okay. Let's see, the error was on line t 294. Oh. That's still 11, which still means the 294. File name, writing. Oh, look at that. Objects, objects. New. And then again? What? What? Okay, so... First of all, let me put the sanitize feature back in. And we actually need to make a new one. Uh, let's see. Def get object uh, get the uh, mesh name I guess is probably the easiest thing to call it and we need an input so uh, uh, source file name return and here we're just going to have uh, a ridge name, which is, you know, at least in my mind, how it was originally conceived. So, theoretically, we should just be able to do, uh, you know, get mesh name. So this would be uh, effectively the last line. I mean, let's uh, basically we're doing that. We're taking object spaceships uh, anvil Pisces dot CGA, and we're just trimming it down to dot Pisces. So. Uh, I'm trying to remember how to do Python substrings. Oh, and I, I, I was doing that in the wrong window, sorry. Uh, we're, we're trying to go from this to just that. So, Python substring. Yeah. 
I believe it's just, you know, parentheses. Yeah. our find works. If there is an R find. Yeah, there is. Okay, so that should at least in theory, do it. At least for the get mesh name. Now we need to go through and find all of these and replace it with the get mesh name. And we're actually going to take Sanitize off, because that's actually something we can do in here if we need it. Which I don't think we'd do. Or maybe we do. fresh hell is this? Six. Sanitize name. Oh, you know what? Probably it'd work if I actually return the the name. All right. That is wrong. That is absolutely wrong! <laughs> uh, it went to R Anvil Pisces to Laugh Anvil Pisces text. Uh, do I need to do like a plus one? I probably need to do a plus one on the on the slash. So that likely will solve some of the issue. Okay, yeah, that is much better. So now it's just going Anvil Pisces, Anvil Pisces. So if I come over here 
And I'm thinking this is going to be like 15 levels deep. Yeah, that's what I thought. Looks like this is uh, not doing what we need to. Yeah, I'm just seeing billboards and scene components. It's not even doing lights. Hmm. Okay. God, do I have to kind of remaster this th whole thing? I really don't want to do that. All right, let's rethink this. Um, export blueprint. Get attached parent. Generate scene component. Execute. Here we go. If source file, which we do not have, it's now file name. So, got item ports. Okay, so object, object properties, we've got tags, file name, so let's start with that. All right. So according to this, it just outputted the ship's anvil Pisces which apparently I'm still spelling wrong. Angel Pisces, there we are. All right, let's just save that right there. Okay, so at least the file location is correct now. Let's see what's going on in here. All right. So now we're calling write blueprint file. Right here. So get the children, generate all text equals generate blueprint text. All right, generate blueprint text. So, if object type equals empty, generate a scene component. If it's armature, if it's mesh. Ah. Uh. So this will be the top layer.
If object parent, if object parent type, okay. So, the first thing we're doing is we're building our parent object class, which would be this guy up here, which is, you know, based on this. I don't know why the naming convention's different. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Could it be... Okay, we got the file name. So that's based on the, uh, the source file name. Which we do not have. And now, we're actually exporting the right parts. There we go. Still mostly scene components. All right. So. <laughs> I gotta look up if it has an instance. So, oh no, I have it has instance type. Ah. All right, well, let's just do this. Print. Obj. Instance type. Uh, S. All right, so this is going to output a whole bunch of uh, good messages. Collection. So yeah, uh, if you see here, the first one is collection. So maybe I switch it from not none. If it does not equal none, generate scene component with true. All right, generate scene component. Skip billboard is true. If item and not skip billboard, add the billboard. Um. Unfortunately, he's made some significant changes, and that kind of changes everything up. Uh. Hmm. Else if... Or object type equals empty 
and object instance type equals none. Let's see how what that does. Probably nothing. Okay, yep, nothing there. Let's check the file, the output file. Oh, you know what? I gotta select the actual Pisces. There we are. Did nothing. So, uh, let's take this and make this the first one. Refresh, re export. Open up, and I'm seeing static meshes again. At least listed in here. All right, static mesh component. Yeah, that might be good enough. All right. We got some lights down there. That's all good. So, we'll save. Can I just export? Yeah, I didn't think so. Good news is, it looks like this worked. So, huzzah. So I'm going to say that that, for at least right now, works. Okay, so got the Unreal part working. Let's check the export meshes. Okay. Uh, all right, so uh, file name and object. We're going to need that uh, get mesh function. I could probably just put it in utilities. So, yeah, got that there. means now I can actually remove it from there. source file which does not work, exist
Although I think that doing this, uh, the file name with the split probably works better. But we'll see if that works at all. Ah, uh, this is why we're trying it with a small ship. All right. Nope. 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 Okay, so when I hit execute, what happens? All right, top object. Okay, since that's literally the same thing, I can just have that happen at the same time. Print. Pisces, Asset Path, yes, that's actually correct. Gonna dump it in here, and the main top file name is Anvil Pisces. Okay, so now it tries to write the FBX files. And then, so it tries to write the FBX file of the top object. Which in this case would not happen, but I'm gonna leave. Now then for the children, it processes the children. And then it tries to write the children. <sighs> if object type does not equal that, does not equal mesh, Oh. Instancing collection. He made this harder. <laughs> okay. Poor children process children. If um, object type equals mesh, then do that. Else, if Object type equals, uh, what was it? Empty. Let's move that to the other. 
All right. All right. Equals empty and object instance type equals collection at this point I need to select the collection and process that so the scene undo uh, isolate source collection Having a lot of problems here. Let's just go freaking new. Reimport. Reimport the Pisces. All right. Uh, you got to import the lighting. I'll import all containers, materials. Yeah, this is that. That's all good. Okay. I have no idea where anything is. is not what I wanted to do tonight. <laughs> uh, and they changed up so much. Uh, isolate sort of... Uh, yeah, that's kind of my thought.
column, exact case. He hid it in a different scene. <sighs> That's completely different, and I am not going to deal with that tonight. So, screw that. <laughs> We're getting back to Unreal Engine where I want to work. All right. So Um no, no more Mr. Pisces for me. Go Drake. Actually, I want to go back. here okay ships Drake Kraken the great Kraken exterior okay so we have our trim and then we got a lot of things here that are <laughs> Just not quite working. So the trims need to be a little bit more gray. Yeah, we've got diff files that don't seem to be working. Uh, if I turn off specular, do they work? Nope. What about normals? Nope. Blend layer? Nope. Vert colors? Ah, it's the vert colors? Okay. Well, that's an easy fix, I think. Vertex normal vert colors. Here we are. Okay, is it trying to apply dirt? Or the ambient occlusion? Probably the dirt. Okay, dirt color. power of the wear map or wear map to the power of dirt I think for the moment even though it says vert colors are enabled need to disable them and let's see how that looks. That looks way better. 
But here's a question. Do these... Uh... Oh, that's neat. Virtual shadow maps. Buffer visualization. Mm. Okay, so is there a way to actually view the normals? Light complexity. Ooh. Getting a little complex there. Uh, shader complexity. We're still pretty good. Yeah, we're, we're barely getting into the reds on any of these. Mesh UV density. Not much I can do about that. Primitive distance. Material texture scales. They have some information here, but it's so small I can't read it. triangles level of detail colorization mesh herod light types Developer vector fields. Uh, ah, vertex colors. Okay, so that's all light. Why? Ah. Uh, okay, so what's that mean for this? All right, so that means both the vertex, uh, both the ambient occlusion and the uh, vertex uh, and the uh, the wear, which is green, are active. And everything that's violet and purple has uh, wear and uh, damage on it, I think. Although... That's going to be where? Hmm. I think where might be inverted. On the other hand, look at that. That's a very clear gradient. And that seems like, yeah, that's going to be a lot more wear on those. Got some good wear over here. No, I'm afraid wear looks like it's perfectly fine. And those are going to be worn. 
Now, let's see, the blue is ambient occlusion, and red is supposed to be a damage state. But we're not really dealing with that, so why is everything kind of purplish? So let's try this, just for crazy sake. I'm going to plug the red channel directly into the color channel. Set this to unlit. And let's see, where was that visualization? I think it was under show, advanced, turn off vertex colors. So this is the red channel. As you know what, I'm actually going to come over here. Set it to the very last thing. Actually, even more so. Eh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. All right. So now. <laughs> This shows only the red channel in color data. That is not a damage state. If anything, that's looking uh, more like AO. Or something we can use for AO. Or where? Okay. Now let's plug in the green. Alright, so this is the green. This is what we think is where. That is clearly not where. Well, it could be where. green or blue I am willing to accept blue as ambient occlusion so yeah we'll just leave that as ambient occlusion which brings us back to green and red so green is supposedly where and yeah that does look like it could be you know useful here but there's something about red Granted, that also looks identical to blue. So, apply. Yeah, there's a little bit of difference in blue. Yeah, you know, like like that. That that's blue, and red's not. So let me punch in red, and that disappears pretty much. Do I have alpha available to me? No. I do not. Okay, so... 
if we assume blue is ambient occlusion, which I am willing to say it is, what does that make red? Now, red is labeled in you know a lot of the editors as being uh, the damage channel. I don't know how to take that. Green is supposed to be the wear channel, which makes sense. Look at this. You, you, you want a little bit of wear and tear on you know some of these nodes. This looks like it could be wear. You know, you got... Uh, you know, little bits brighter than others, others that are darker. But should this be inverted? Possibly. Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. At the moment, I've been assuming that the wear map handles dirt color. Maybe that's what red is. Red is the dirt color. So let's give that a try. If we assume that is... All right, and now we have to turn vertex colors on, and it's borked again. Yay. Unless red is supposed to be backwards. So in which case, the wear map is inverted. I gotta say, that looks a lot more wearable. What happens if I plug green in there instead? Inverted, I should say. Well, I don't know, that kind of looks right. Although I definitely need to work on the wear and tear on this. But at least, uh, at least there's that. What is our dirt color though? Is it the diffuse color? Because that seems to be what's uh, being indicated. <sighs> All right, so if I just... Base color multiplied that plus that. That doesn't seem right. <laughs> Makes everything a lot darker. No. All right, we'll just go with this for right now. So I'm inverting the wear map and hopefully that uh, works. We're gonna keep, 
we're going to keep the uh, the vertex colors the way they are. We'll just invert the wear map, and that solves a lot of our issues. Okay. All right, so let's move on to our next uh, next contestant. Okay, so we got glow, we got glow, brown panel detail, brown panel detail. Although, what about it makes it brown? I don't know. Every single color in here, except for the uh, the D panels, which you could argue is brown, especially if I turn off uh, the RGB. It just does not look that good. All right, well, we got the brown panel, yellow panel, yep. Uh, surface landing A. Surface landing. Surface landing A. What the hell? has a normal map and a blend layer. And that's it? Oh, all that's set. All that's set. Okay, blend factor. Yeah, all these settings are correct. Except for the layer 2 blend gloss. That is not correct. 1.5? Where'd you get 1.5? Was I just testing stuff? Okay, that's alright. Blend mask tiling. Alpha glow cutoff. We're dirt. We're specular. Blend fall off. And we're dirt. Okay. So, is specular color effectively inverted? Where am I getting roughness? Wait, 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 wait. These are all filter sevens? Ugh. Are you sure this is an loom shader? Yeah, it's a loom shader. Alright. Do we have anything else that's filter seven? Yeah, the Drake Palms diff is Filter 7. Uh, near as I can tell, Filter 7 basically means multiplicative. So. Oh, yay. supposed to show up on that monitor well you know it doesn't ruin anything I guess
Okay, I think uh, the program may have uh, frozen. This does happen from time to time. I've been noticing a lot, actually. Alright. Yeah, it is not responding and the uh, the memory usage is stagnant. When the memory usage is stagnant, it means it's not doing anything. Alright, so let's... Uh, come on, there we go. Uh, I might have to take a little bit of time to do some uh, editing on this uh, episode. Because you're not... Uh, oh, shit! Uh, mm, muscle memory kicked in. And I just uh, opened, or at least tried to open, uh, a work project that I've been working on. When did I stop recording my desktop? Well, we'll pick up our recording right now. <laughs> so what you guys are seeing is going to be the only recording of this video. It's just local recording was messed up beyond repair. And I don't know how much of it I missed getting. About two to three hours worth. Two and a half hours. Okay. Good news. It looks like uh, the other project did not uh, pop up. All right. So let's get back to this. Uh, cancel. So yeah, where does my roughness come from? Uh, the gloss map on the normal. That's where it comes from. And of course, there it goes. Uh... Yeah, this uh, this one this episode is going to be uh, a little edited. So either I'm going to cut things out, or probably more likely blur them out. It's just a lot of uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get work stuff you know fixed up, and it's just being a dick. <sighs> Stop loading. <sighs> I have been working on this project pretty much every day all this week. So, yeah, it was just straight up muscle memory. Like, oh, okay, I got to open this. Nope! <laughs> I can't do that on stream. So yeah, uh, this stream's gonna be like an extra day or two probably, because I'm gonna have to go through there and you know, locally you know blur anything that you guys might see that you shouldn't. So it won't be totally unedited. I want to be able to kill it before it f starts. I want to kill it before it learns to walk. Uh, 
Now I can usually kill the, the launcher part, but that just hides the information from me. All right, so are we nice and safe and back? I want to give it just a little bit more time because I have a feeling that as soon as I pop back to the screen, it's just going to... You know what? I think I'm actually going to purposely lose this video because you guys should not be seeing this stuff and I don't want to edit it. And I'm not actually happy with how the stream's turning out right now. All right. So... Oh, this is looking pretty good. Everything's looking really shiny, though. I'm not liking that. Yeah, it should not be that shiny. Yeah, it should be looking like that on the roughness. Am I doing this correctly? Uh, why does it feel like there should be something in the blue channel? Uh, but there's not. All right, well, let's load up our uh, material. How are we handling normals? Normals and gloss. All right, so. Um, all right, what happens if I target that? It's still considered linear color. All right. You know, I gotta set these uh, other ones up as linear color. All right. Um. So now we have the this little guy who's linear color to uh, normals. That doesn't seem right. So let's do this. And uh, mass components derive Z normal. And does that? Oh, normalize. So that multiplied by two minus one and then you derive the Z from that. Uh, 
yeah, we're just going to do that. Screw, screw that third channel. Well, actually, no. Because that's outputting all three channels, and that's just, you know, figuring out our third channel. So that brings us back to... No, no changes. So now... You know, maybe, you know, just swapping these out to linear color will solve some of the problem. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, I'm outputting gloss. Detail maps, gloss, gloss. I am not outputting the metallic. I'm not outputting any of these? Oh! That's because I'm setting them in here. finding the BC4. I need like a, a, a neutral... Wow, I have like not prepared for this at all. <laughs> I hope you guys are enjoying this because I'm going nuts. sure that I've imported this correctly it's at a it's a linear grayscale yep good So, BC4, yeah, which is labeled as an alpha inside this, so, <laughs> alright, I want to get that as an RG, is that a linear, or a... I'm going to assume it's a regular. Okay, 
so I'm going to close that. So, am I... Okay, I'm taking the gloss and I'm inverting it first thing. So, the first thing I do with gloss is I turn it inside out to turn it into roughness. I then clamp it to zero and one and then mask it off and then that's it. The rest of it's applied to the material that gets built inside in here. Right there, roughness. Along with specular and metallic. So, the roughness here. So that's good output to there. No roughness takes over anywhere else that I'm aware of. So it should output correctly. Why is it not? Am I doing this wrong? Surface landing. Yeah, that's right. Oh, you know what? That's not right. That needs to be a vector displacement node. So that should be very rough. Wait, 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 wait. Why does this look like a, a, a roughness node, as a, a roughness map, as opposed to a uh, specular map? A, a, a gloss map. On the other hand, look, you know, that should be very rough. So this should be inverted for a roughness map. Can I, like, temporarily invert this? Uh, max alpha is one. Min alpha is zero. There we go. Yeah. That's how it would look. So... I think it actually is supposed to be shiny. So that one's pretty good. Why is this, the surface landing, so goddamn noisy? And why is there... N Wait, is there anything in here? I don't think there is. I feel like I'm seeing something, but that could just be my monitor being dirty. And then there's that, which in a roughness map would look like that. So ah. Uh. Both of these should be layered on top of each other. So even if, you know, this is, you know, highly glossy, which it isn't, or at least it shouldn't be, especially in, you know, that little section, it'd be nice and dark. The other one, slot three, should multiply on top of that, shouldn't it? Oh, what am I doing? Uh, a loom. All right, let's, uh, I don't think we have any detail, ma no, we don't have any detail maps on this particular one, correct? 
Yeah, it's just a, two blend layers and a normal. All right. So, let's take a look at this. We have our normal, and we have our secondary normal. So we're taking these, we're blending them together, and that gets all merged in. The alphas come here, and we're lurping between them? Wait, 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 wait. So we have a blend map. Oh. You know what? I think we do this. We multiply these two and then lerp that. So let's try that. <laughs> well, that definitely looks a lot less shiny. What happens if I max that? Still not sure. Oh, I'm getting a little bit right up there. So there is a, a little bit escaping. Uh, reflections. Uh, no, that's the actual reflections. I want to see. Uh, no detailed lighting. Eh. I want to see the goddamn reflections. <laughs> Where's my goddamn electric car, Bruce? Light map complexity. Material texture scales. Five textures. Virtual texture pin. Let's switch that back. True and active. Okay. Hierarchy. <laughs> Stop right there, criminal scum. <laughs> How does this look in here, though? Um, not bad. We still got some shinies. I'm going to say good enough for right now. All right, let's just swap all this. Bulk edit. All right, so compositing compression. Here we are. Vector displacement. 
we'll save. And I want to turn on use virtual texture streaming. And we'll do the same thing here. Vector displacement. Enable. Um, there we go. Levels of detail, huh? And we'll label them as uh, world texture maps. Disconnect, disconnect. Uh, that one, we're going to leave. These two. Reset. Virtual linear color. And now I can reconnect that. And that. And hit apply. While I can probably tweak some of these forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and I would love to, we have other things to get done. All right, so that surface landing, red panel detail. All right, red panel detail. That's wrong. This is red panel detail, right? No, this is red panel. Red panel detail. <gasps> this one hasn't been touched. All right, so first thing, uh, we need to enable normal map, specular map, blend layer, Detail mapping. Ooh, this is gonna be a chunky boy. And vert colors. 
All right, so this will be point one. Point 11. And point 11, six. The specular color. And that. All right, we got emissive. Opacity of one. Shininess of 20. And absolutely no glow. All right. Panel D. Panel D. Oh, panels. D. Object, spaceship, spaceship, strake, kraken. Oh, wait, textures. Yeah, Drake textures. Exterior. Panel D. DNLA. And the next one is also panel D. Let's just unlock all these. All right, so panel D specular on four and six panel D UDM. Ooh. Okay, panel nine is panel E. Diff, yeah. Panel D spec. Panel D blend. And the panel D UDM. All right. Not bad so far. Um, still have this U offset, and I don't know what those are for. All right, so this is 21.5. Blend fall off is one. Detail gloss is one. Blend specular color. go that's looking better uh, where dirt blend factor is 1.1 layer tiling is one alpha glow cutoff don't have that blend diffuse zero detail diffuse scale 0.1 detail bump scale three Ooh. See that? You can see it when I you know, make adjustments. But they want three. Uh, mask tiling is one. Diffuse color. Oh, this is a unique color. So. Blend glossiness is at level 70, which feels like that just didn't do anything. Detail bump scale, 5. Blend factor, 6. And detail gloss is 1. I gotta say, that actually looks pretty good. Huh. 
Oh, and that got a whole bunch of the shit. Oh, wow, look at that. That, that actually looks really nice. I told you this was a better, <laughs> some of these were better materials. All right. That was the red panel detail. I feel like red panel needs some work. Where is red panel? There's red panel. Okay. Uh, we're on brown panel now. <laughs> he wore the brown pants. All right, normal, specular, blend, invert. All right. <laughs> Shinius is not here. Opacity, yes. Emissive, yes. Diffuse. Sorting up the diffuse. the major panel D. <laughs> Let the death hit the floor. Spec. Yep. Am I just not seeing the button to enable vir virtual? Well, it says virtual is enabled. to virtual. jump out here D D N A D D N A D D N A Alright Dun 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 Convert to virtual text might as well. <laughs> What's the worst that can happen? Everything dies. Everything you ever loved and knew dies. Oh yeah, that does sound bad. Do I have and have virtual textures on? Yeah. 
enable virtual texture support. There we go. Apparently I did not have that on. Virtual texture light maps, and eh, no. That's good. All right, and save, close, save all. I really think doing the virtual texturing is gonna solve a lot of issues. And restart now. Ah. Crusader music is so beautiful. And of course, it's got to compile all the shaders. Yay. Including the engine shaders. All right, um, what was I doing? Oh yeah, it was Python, let's close that. Don't need that. Uh, might need that. Don't think I'm gonna need that. Probably gonna need that, but later. Uh, let's see. Oh. Huh. Pause that back up. How are we doing in here? We're fine. We can close that. Anything to save some memory. Uh. If I could convert all of this, to, all of Star Citizen to Unreal Engine, that would be fun. The hard part would be their technology. But honestly, if I could, you know, b develop a way to do the assets, that would probably get like 95% of the way there. And then after that, it's just, you know, making the, well, it wouldn't get me 95%. It would get, probably get me like a good 70 to 75% of the way there. And then the remaining, you know, 30 to 25% would be, you know, reverse engineering you know, planets and all sorts of stuff. At this point, nah. I'd be happy just to get realistic looking spaceships and a couple of, uh, you know, locations. But, you know, I could also try and, you know, you know, do stuff in Unreal Engine. I mean, building a whole planet in Unreal Engine, that would be kind of fun. But at the same time, that's a lot of work. It'd be easier to do what they're doing and just, you know, build a uh, system that builds the planet for you. And then you just, you know, come in and make, you know, whatever artistic tweaks you want. Hell, if I had access to their source code, I would definitely do what I could to try and convert it to Star Citizen over to Unreal Engine. But you know, they they they've dug in so deeply on that, despite everything. Yeah, you know, it probably would not be a wise idea for them to move over. I mean, if they had done it, you know, eight maybe even seven years ago. Maybe as far back as five years ago, but at this point, no. I think they're just too dug in too deep, and you know it's not worth it to them to convert everything over. Although I will say, five is probably closer to their engine than anything else, and it's definitely better with uh, you know it would definitely be better with spaceships. The parallax materials would be the hardest thing to recreate. But that's also one of those things where Unreal Engine could probably handle the increased poly count you need to do that. And, you know, except for characters, you don't need LODs anymore. With certain exceptions. I mean, you know, that's just my view.
plus there's a lot of really good assets that I think they're actually using. I mean, you know, I can pro if I spent some time with it, I could probably make a passable Daymar uh, facility facsimile. And then it wouldn't be that hard to kind of switch it up to make it look a little bit more like, you know, Yella or, you know, one of the other moons. It would be fun to recreate a jump town. But at the same time, not only recreate it, but push it a little bit more. The hard part, I think, right now it will be, you know, developing a system where I can actually convert their stuff one-to-one -one, uh, over to Star Citizen, you know, basically using their numbers and everything, and then somehow getting it to work with player characters. Because those have a hard limit on how many textures they can run on a single material. So, I don't know what the best use of that would be. And yet their default system is basically set up to run, you know, like, you know, eight layers of uh, materials that get, you know, sandwiched onto each other. There's definitely some optimization going on in there. Or they, uh, you know, hack the engine enough that, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't complain. I have even no idea where to even start to do something like that. Yeah, if I wasn't working, uh, like, almost literally right up to the uh, time we started streaming, I probably would have converted, you know, turned on the virtual texturing first. There's a lot of technology that I just, you know, didn't turn on for this. That I probably should have. But you know what? This is for cinematics. I'm not doing this to recreate the game. I'm doing this to recreate cinematics. I want more of these, uh, you know, fan musics. Because I've been listening to these for a very long time, and I do have some of the official sound musics. Uh... I'd love to get some more, but, you know, they haven't released any. And I think some of the ones I have are actually data rips. <laughs> but, uh, no, it's, it's just beautiful music to listen to. They recently put out something uh, about, you know, fan film and machinima policy from their legal department. And uh, some of it has me a little concerned and I think uh, I think they might want to re uh, you know rethink some of these you know positions. I mean yeah here let's uh, let's take a look at this. Uh, all right, uh, fan film and machinima policy. We have always recognized and appreciated the role that engaged fandom plays in the story of Star Citizen, and enjoy uh, in particular the passion and enthusiasm. Our community content creators have for the lore of our universe. Many such fans have shown their affection and respect for Star Citizen's branding and integrity and inquired as to what activities can or cannot be legally pursued. To that end, we provided the following we provide the following rules and guidelines for fan films, including machinima, live action video, and audio dio audio drama featuring fiction set in the Star Citizen universe which we permit and encourage so long as they are so long as they are observed and respected meaning these policy specifics um number 1 disclaimer any work of fiction using the star citizen universe as its setting either in whole or in part must display or recite the following uh disclaimer prominently within its on-screen credits introduction and any marketing or promotional material, including the hosting page, production website, and description accompanying the content itself, whether on social media, streaming uh, page, video channel, or otherwise. 
This is a non-commercial fan production. Star Citizen, Squadron 42, and all related marks, logos, you know, blah, 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 blah. Absolutely no problem with that. That is 100% up for that. Let's do that. Disallowed terms and claims. Fan productions may not be promoted or described in any writing as official, genuine, licensed, endorsed, nor, nor any other language, nor may in any other language imply any sponsorship, endorsement, or affiliation between Cloud Imperium Games and the fan production. I can understand that. Uh, you know, the, the, there might be, uh, uh, you know, some misunderstandings there. But I understand what they're trying to say, and I have absolutely no problem with that. Uh, you know what? Let's go big, so you guys can read this. Uh, funding. This is the one of the ones I think is probably a little... Eh. Cloud Imperium does not object to limited fundraising for the costs and or expenses of a fan production, so long as the total amount net any and all... Uh, platform fees does not exceed fifty thousand dollars. Okay, uh, at that point, that 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 sounds okay. Uh, it means that uh, you know, you know, fifty thousand dollars for a production, I guess. Well, but uh, let's keep going. All fundraising must cease thereafter. Okay, uh, so fifty thousand, and then you stop. All fan productions involving the same creator, participants, or otherwise clearly related to each other in name, story, characters, or other shared or common content are considered a single fan production for the purposes of funding. So, if you're making a series of them, for the entirety of the series, no matter how long you go, $50,000 is your max that you can raise. That I have a bit of a problem with. Uh, especially when you get involving the same creator, participants, or otherwise clearly related to each other. Yeah. Uh, creator and participants? So, if I... If Morphologist, you know, makes like, you know, $50,000... And I, I'm, here I am, still struggling to make five. And he somehow magnanimously says, Yeah, sure. Uh, I'll come in and do a, a little bit for you. So he comes in, does a little bit. With this language, I am no longer allowed to grow any money because one of the participants in my production has already made $50,000. So, no. No, that needs to change. I, I would I would make it more of you know you know all fan productions, uh, you know I I would remove remove this part involving the same creator participants and just have all fan productions that are uh, uh, otherwise clearly related to another in name, story, characters. That way, yes. You can have a, uh, a a series, and you're still limited to fifty thousand. That's fine. But what happens when that creator stops that series and wants to go on to do another series? What happens if you have multiple creators coming together to uh, to work on a project and then go off on their own? For the purposes of funding, they're still in one project. So there's a lot of problems I have with that. But for a, uh, you know, a series of stories that are connected, you know, yeah, 50000 for fundraising to cover, you know, production costs, that's fine. Uh, I'm also noticing uh, that, fortunately, this does not seem to affect Patreon. So, you know, it, if we were to do like a GoFundMe or a Kickstarter... 50,000 is the max we can do, and we have to stop all fundraising after that. That's perfectly fine. Um, but, uh, you know, 
And that's if we're doing it probably directly for that project. But saying that any participant in a fan production uh, will basically be clumped together for the purposes of funding is a big no. I, I do not accept that. And they need to change that. Uh, I will you know, say, yes, uh, you know, all fan production is from the same creator. That's good. Uh, uh, if you could change it to primary participants, that could be good. Because, you know, if you have like a core group of people who are making like three fan productions, yeah, that makes sense. But just saying participants means that almost literally anybody who helps you on that video basically for the purposes of the funding you are considered working together so you know i'm helping with uh you know nocturne because i really like that i want to go make my own machinima uh stuff for the purposes of funding i can't uh i can't raise any money for that if nocturne already has the maximum amount of money because I am considered a participant of that. So, I would modify this to say, you know, any r related stories. 50,000 for a related series of stories, yeah, I can get that. Yeah, you can even say the same creator, that's fine. Uh, you know, the same core team, that would be okay. But so long as it's focused around that one group of stories. If I go make this story and I've already maxed out my funding, that doesn't help me if I need to raise funding for this other Star Citizen project. That's like one of my biggest issues with this big thing. And I could probably keep, you know, pounding on on that one issue, but let's move on to others. Uh, source material limitations. No authorization is given to use of content or materials from Squadron 42. Uh, at this point in time, I would say okay with that. That's their single player storyline. Uh, and, you know, that's, you know, perfectly acceptable. Uh, no authorization is given to use any Star Citizen marketing material, including trailers, videos, or concept art. So... I think with the exception of maybe having like an image pop up in the background as, you know, a, a set dressing kind of thing. Yeah, you can't use their marketing materials in your, you know, fan videos. Perfectly fine with that. No revenue. Fan production, uh, fan productions may not be paywalled. No subscription, admission, or other fee to view or enjoy the work may be charged. So, YouTube's fine. Uh, you might even be able to get away with uh, doing, you know, get it a week early on Patreon, but you cannot make it only available on the Apple iStore or, you know, anything else that's a paid subscription to watch. It needs to be available for free. I, I get that and I'm okay with that. Fan productions may not be used to obtain revenue through distribution or exhibition, with the exception of advertising revenue on sh uh, video sharing or streaming platforms. So you get you get the uh, you can get money for you know making money on YouTube and stuff, but uh, you know you, you can't uh, go to a local theater, put it on the big screen, and make money from selling tickets. Fan productions may not be used to obtain revenue or funding through the sales of goods or services, including merchandise, licensed or otherwise, product placement, or embedded advertising. So you can't make money by you know putting an ad inside your 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 thing. You can't make money by uh, you know having somebody say, "Hey, I enjoy Coke." <sighs> Yeah, it's, you know, 2,000, it's fine, 900 years in the future, but I still enjoy it. Don't pay me to say this. You can't do that. Uh, you know, through sale of goods and services. Uh, yeah, I get that, but merchandise? 
if we are taking Star Citizen literally, if we're taking their assets and trying to create our own merchandise to sell, yeah, that, that that's kind of morally gray, and I can see that. But if we're making our own merchandise based on, you know, characters we create in Star Citizen, but they, they may, you know... I feel like that's, you know, taking away people who, you know, might have a legitimate storyline and, you know, you know, uh, you know, investment and saying, no, you can't do that. Uh, perfect example of this. Uh, you know, a, uh, a bridge series like, you know, DBZA. They can't make any money making merchandise off of Dragon Ball or Dragon Ball Z. What they can do is take their characterization of it, do custom artwork, and then make uh, merchandise from that. At least that's what they did. I don't know if this is going to be, uh, if this kills that or not. I think it kills that. And quite frankly, uh, I'm not particularly happy about that. I want, I want a little bit uh, clearer, uh, you know, definitions there. Third-party content, Cloud Imperium cannot provide, you know, provide or obtain permissions for any fan production to use third-party content. Uh, fan production is responsible for in obtaining any and all legal permissions to license third-party content, or blah, blah, blah. Basically, if you use uh, Star Citizen, it's up to you, uh, content, uh, it's up to you to get permission to use, uh, you know, like, uh, Elite Dangerous content. No commercial use. Uh, yeah, you can't sell your, your product, basically. Uh, these rules and guidelines do not create or uh, grant any implicit or explicit right to use Star Citizen or Squadron 42 content for any commercial purposes. So, you can't go around and sell your video. Terms of service. The fan production must not contain any material or content that would otherwise you know, violate the terms of service or end user agreement. That makes sense. No exclusive rights. F creators of fan pro productions must not seek to register their works or elements of the work under copyright or trademark law. So, I would argue against this solely for the story and uh, you know the character development, which you can wrap into the story. I think you sh should be able to. Uh, you know, register or copyright the storyline, but not the environment, not the work itself, all that. Because, you know, you don't want to create this epic grand storyline and then somebody else literally picks it up, puts it in a different universe, and makes a mint. So, I, I, want, I want a little bit of uh, definition on that. Any production that fails to observe or abide by any of the above is unauthorized and Cloud Imperium reserves the right uh, to uh, enforce its intellectual property rights against such uses. So basically, you break this, they have the right to pull your content or you know block it completely. Uh, not to mention probably lock out your account. Yeah, or revoke any license or given permission in the face of later disclosed or later discovered deficiencies. Yeah. And they're you know, reserving the right to change these whenever the hell they want. And yeah, that's kind of where I'm looking at things with that. So, yeah. Uh, but I thought I'd just kind of talk to see you. I'll probably make a clip of this and you know put that on the internet separately. And I'll probably link to it too on uh, on Spectrum. But that's just my view of this. I agree with most of it. I just have those couple of uh, issues and questions and concerns and want clarification on that. So, let's get back over here where we're run running virtual textures. Ah. I accidentally hit a button and it tried to save. Uh oh, I think I hit too many textures. Alright, 
So, convert to virtual textures. So by converting to virtual textures, that's going to make things a lot easier for me. Uh, okay, yeah, that's that's good, but. It, not a uh, virtual fixture. Alright. Alright, display texture. Let's just convert to virtual textures. Yes. Preparing textures. And one of the big reasons for doing the virtual textures is that it makes getting the data in and out a lot easier to work with. Uh, while the textures are uh, while the shaders are compiling wait what is this <laughs> I mean I know what it looks like but oh okay All right, so we probably need to make some changes to our material. All right, we're up to the yellow panel, which is this guy. Oh, wait, 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 we're at the brown panel. Ho, 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 you almost escaped, Dr. Smith. That doesn't seem right. No, those are... That's right. Okay, yeah, it's looking brown now. The more I look at it. Alright, let's uh, open these up. Good, virtual, virtual, yes. Oops, wrong button. I keep forgetting that I have things, you know, set up weirdly. All right, virtual color, virtual color, and we got the regular colors there. I like that you can, uh, you know, collapse all these now. It just makes things so much easier. Come in here to split and virtual mask apply. Okay, so this actually needs to be uh, swapped up to this guy. 
All right. Really wish I could stream multiple, you know, monitors at once without, you know, causing a massive, you know, problem. Ooh, you know what? This is actually a perfect time to use derived. Because we're only getting two points of data and we're trying to add a third. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Or do I want that to be in the SRGB range? Mm, probably not. I think that's probably the linear hex color. All right. Yep, eighty eighty F. So yeah, we'll use derive Z. So basically, we'll just come in here. We'll you know throw away this uh, other one, and just you know what? Hmm. All right, let's uh, copy, paste. Actually, I'll just pull that down there. I don't know why I grabbed the other one. Uh, this is gonna be a vector two. So actually I can just do a two, 0.5 and 0.5. Copy, paste. All right, derive Z, V3, and derive Z, V2. Linear color V2. Linear color V3. And we'll kind of just take these and pull them back. And I'm going to set these both to that. Copy that, paste that. And there we go. Oh, I should uh, set that to one and that to three. Actually, we can put them both to three. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I'm skipping two. What are you doing? Skipping too. You can't do that. Not the skippy. Alright, so first of all, we're gonna do that, which means we can now skip that and that. Oh, by the way, I, I wanted to make a mention about last night's uh, Final Fantasy stream. The uh, 
Oop. Uh, the guys that I didn't uh, recognize from the very end of the game are actually the bad guys from Vincent's solo game, Dirge of Cerberus. Who knew? <laughs> but that's kind of nice that they're kind of tying that in. You know, so that actually might be a, uh, a part five or six or whatever you know they do to end this game this little charade no uh when they end uh you know the final fantasy main story that could end up being a, a dlc they do so there's a lot of possibilities here Does the same, that does the same, so that's all good. So, detail maps, let's check the specular maps. Alright, virtual color and virtual color. This is brought to you by virtual color, not that crappy imitation color. Why, yes, no. Yep, that's all good. Yeah, I think we're good. All right. Save. Close, close. That actually looks better. And now it's actually, uh, you know, working on uh, virtual textures. So... Uh, we are working on the brown panel. All right, so. Yep, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Emissive, opacity. We just got all the, we just got most of the panels in. Ten's got spec. So now we got to do the blend diff from the Aegis Gladius. All right, so Aegis Gladius textures blend diff. Oh wow, that that looks a lot better all of a sudden. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh revert you can see eh, it doesn't look too bad you put it in suddenly ooh, it just pops all right it's almost done with the uh, big calculations my frame rate right now over a hundred <laughs> and you want to see something really fun let's build another one about a hundred We're still at a hundred. And I still haven't nanite this thing. Actually, let's take a quick look. 
And this guy. Alright, let's enable Nanite. And... Save. And can I see the Nanite? I wish to see the Nanite. Apply changes. Okay, that was crap. Uh, relative error, zero. There we go. Show nanite fallback. I'm going to set that to two, point two. No, let's just take it straight to the one. Fallback percentage for triangles. Let's say 50%. No? Okay, just straight up 100. So there it is. This is now Nanite. And it looks really good. Minimal residency. How much should always be in memory? The rest will be streamed. Yeah, we'll do minimal. What happens if I set this to that? Relative error to one, apply. Okay. Um, one twenty eighth of a centimeter. Sixty fourth of a centimeter. Automatic. Any way you look at it, it's garbage if the fallback relative error is one. Trim relative error. Hmm. Set that to auto. All right. It's the same as the fallback. So, with this, I probably could select it all, bulk edit, and then nanite settings will enable. We'll set that to zero. And now it's recalculating all the nanites. Probably should have set the relative before. Uh... Oh, actually, no, nanites disabled. So setting things wrong. Alright, so now I can enable Nanite. <laughs> Generate damn you. That might be a generate button, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 
it's just easier to let it do its thing. <sighs> Are you done yet? <laughs> Are you winning, computer? <laughs> I never win. I've had this great idea for a uh, animated superhero TV series, and I've been wanting to work on it lately. And I, the more I've been thinking about it, the more I'm thinking, what's to stop us from just making it in Unreal Engine? I mean, it would save us so much time. We could get exactly the look we want. It makes the most sense. The only problems are I need to find people who can help me make it. Because I definitely do not have the, uh, I have the technical know-how, and I know how I want it to look. I don't have the, uh, character artistry to bring it to life. So. If you're interested, give me a ring. Alright, good. Nanite is up and running. We will save all... <laughs> Hopefully, it all looks fantastic now. But it makes me wonder, how many of these, you know, uh, Krakens can we have on screen now? Probably more than you can have on screen in, uh, in the CryEngine right now. Hell, I don't think you can even have one. <laughs> Not without breaking the server! Close that. And our frame rate went down. What the hell? Um no. Yeah, the frame rate rate went down. But, you know. <sighs> so we were looking at about 70 frames a second with three after nanoiding. Which seems weird. There we go. Okay, no, no, now we've got six. And we're still at about, you know, 60 to 70. It's nice and smooth and fast. Now, when I actually move them, just because of the way I have them built, they're causing problems. What happens when I make 12? And to be clear, there's probably no way you could have 12 uh, Krakens on the Star Citizen server at the moment. Even if the Kraken was actually in the game. I just don't think it could handle it. At least not at a good frame rate. And it looks like my frame rate tanked. 
Oh, I let go, and we're hovering about 52 frames ish. It's still pretty decently smooth. Oh, I gotta kind of back these eyes up a bit. <laughs> Honestly, I'm surprised. I was getting better frame rates before I did this at Nan with Nanite. Which makes me wonder if I come here and disable Nanite. Will my frame rate go up? No. Oh, it's calculating. It's preparing the mesh distance fields and the mesh cards. Still, it's doing some uh, pretty heavy calculating and uh, well, I'm hearing my fans spin up. And we're still at like 38, 37 frames, sometimes jumping up as far as 40. And that's with 12 Krakens. Keep in mind, these are the hollow Krakens. There's nothing inside them. This is just the outer shell. Oh, imagine what it would be like if I got the, uh, uh, the ship, uh, the javelin with the interior. <laughs> imagine what that would be like. Jeez. Now, my guess is that most of the uh, delay is because of the way I have this set up. If I were to, you know, take this and bake it down into a single mesh and, you know, probably get rid of all the uh, the little uh, nodes and, you know, things, it would probably work a lot better. I want to see what the frame rate is after the uh, mesh distance fields and everything get compiled. Okay, yeah, mesh distance field, and suddenly we're back up to 50s. Yeah, we're at the 50s. And that's without Nanite. So it looks like the biggest issue might have something to do with how the uh, blueprint is uh, building it. I mean, having all these little pieces, <laughs> every little piece, <laughs> every little piece, um, and is structure 01 the same as structure and structure 2? Are these platforms the same? You know, how many of these things are effectively identical? And we could effectively reduce. I mean, these are all the same vert counts and sizes. So, if I opened up the blueprint, and let's uh, kind of come back here. All right, so first of all, There's a whole bunch of uh, billboards that I ha have in here to help me figure out where things go. Now keep in mind, you know, our frame right here is hovering around the 50s or so. Right now it's in the 40s and that's with Nanite on. So 44, 45, somewhere there. 
It actually goes down when I make the screen bigger like this. At any rate, uh, I want to grab as many of these billboards as I can, and I'm just going to delete them. Because I don't necessarily need them for building this. Huh, landing gear, huh? Mostly the billboards were to help me uh, see things. I don't really need them. And keep in mind, almost everything that is like a little node usually has a billboard attached to it. All right, delete. That was about half. Save, which should compile. Yeah, our fr we, we've definitely gone up in frames. Go full screen. Yeah, we're definitely hitting more frames. So, we got more billboards, floodlights, galore. There are the, the tanks. I'm wondering if I can swap those out for the same model and save even more memory. Billboards are gone. Compile and save. All right, and now is. We don't need any physics. I mean, at this point, anything that can reduce, you know, our memory usage. Okay, so we've removed all the, uh, all that. What are we up to? We are now hovering more in the 50s range. So yeah, it is absolutely blueprint based. So I'm going to pull this over to the other screen. Uh, let's look up tanks. So we got, uh, Okay. All right, so we're looking at, I think, one of these. Okay. So we're looking at these guys, basically. Yeah, we got one right here, 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 and here, here. What happens when I take these tanks Yeah, that looks like all the tanks. And I'm going to have them all reference a single uh, object. So the biggest question is, are they all the same tank? I propose it to you that they are. I didn't see a difference. So this one on top is our A tank. Uh, that's, our, that's our main tank. These ones are all different, but the same. So let's compile, save, and now our frame rate's worse.
oh, I closed the blueprint and suddenly it got better. Okay, yeah, now we're popping up to the mid-50s. So now, I'm wondering if these things... Okay, that one looks like it might be different. Or not. They do all look the same. Alright, so these are... Structure. So let's see if one and two... Match up, compile... Save. Close the blueprint. Yeah, a little bit. So if we could definitely, uh, yeah. What about the landing platforms? Are they all the same? They sure look the same to me. And if we look at them directly, you can see it doesn't really seem to be much of a difference between them. Which makes me think they're all the same too. So if we can uh, do that. So, platform. And we'll set that all there. Looks the same. We got entryways. All right. Swap those out for that one. More instances of the same mesh. Definitely increasing frame rates. We're now squarely in the 50s. We're not you know, dipping down into the 40s too much. So there's definitely a lot of optimization we can do for this. But still, you know, now that I can take those out... Ah... Uh, At any rate, you know, we can take these now. Uh, replace with that. No. That. Yeah, replace with that. Save selected. And we, actually, we can do that with a lot of these, actually. <laughs> and just getting them out of uh, our listing here will make things a little bit easier for us, too. Yeah, just clearing them out is actually increasing our frames. So, yeah, there's uh, a lot of optimization I can do here. Uh, I, I definitely want to get us back up to a point where we can, you know, make a whole lot of instances of this. And actually, that's an interesting question. 
could I create an instance of this? Ooh, I can pilot it. Uh... Is there an instance? Level instance, material, weighted instance, placement, partition. Uh, I feel like that's probably a good idea, but I at the same time, I feel like that's probably not what I need. Hm. Still. All right, guys. That's going to be it for tonight. Thank you for joining me. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, I definitely have uh, some stuff to do. But, uh, yeah, this was, this was good. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to put this up immediately or if I'm going to edit it. I definitely have to do some editing. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to put it up at all. But uh, if so, expect it probably Monday because I'm basically taking a, a lot of tomorrow off for meetings and Easter so yeah oh uh, tomorrow's stream for Star Citizen is going to be an hour later than normal so it's going to be starting at 6 rather than 5 uh, I hope you'll come join us for some uh, Star Citizen Easter uh, fun uh, I don't think that there's a uh, uh, an event planned inside the universe yet but I don't know we can just go in and have fun we can go mining and you know real mining or you know you know what I might take the guys rock not rock mining but uh, mole mining that could be fun and profitable we'll find out that's it for tonight I'll see you all next time tomorrow at 6pm pacific time until then, good night, everybody.